the DNA evidence that changes everything about the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's 1947 in the scorching cliffs above the Dead Sea. A young Bedouin shepherd is looking for a lost goat when he tosses a stone into a cave. The crack of breaking pottery echoes back. What he discovers becomes the greatest archaeological discovery of the 20th century, the Dead Sea Scrolls. A thousand ancient manuscripts, the oldest surviving copies of the Hebrew Bible, texts nobody had ever seen before from a civilization 2,000 years dead. But here's the 80-year-old mystery that stumped scholars. Where did these scrolls actually come from? One theory, a small, isolated religious community wrote all these texts themselves. Others believed they came from all over ancient Judea, from multiple communities. Scholars could only guess, until now. Because somewhere in a Swedish laboratory, researchers just unlocked a secret hidden in the scroll's molecular structure that fundamentally rewrites what we thought we knew about ancient Judaism. This is how DNA evidence changed everything. Most scrolls weren't written on paper, they were written on parchment animal skin. And here's the revolutionary insight. Every fragment, no matter how tiny, still contains DNA from the animal it came from, a biological fingerprint thousands of years old. Which animals provided the parchment? Of the 26 fragments, 24 were sheepskin. That made sense. Sheep were abundant. Then came two fragments that stopped everyone in their tracks. Fragment 4, Q70. Fragment 4, Q72. B. Both from the book of Jeremiah. Both were cowhide. At first, this seems minor, but in the context of where these scrolls were found, it's seismic. The scrolls came from caves around Qumran, near the Dead Sea. The landscape is harsh desert, suitable for sheep and goats, but not cattle. Cows need reliable water and substantial pasture. There's no archaeological evidence that cattle were ever raised at Qumran. The conclusion was inescapable. These scrolls were not made at Qumran. Someone else made them, somewhere with cattle somewhere with water and fertile land. The Jordan Valley, just across the desert, known for its fertility and livestock. This single discovery shattered the old theory that Qumran was an isolated sect, writing its own texts. Instead, Qumran was a library, a gathering place where scrolls from diverse origins were collected and studied, connected to the wider world. If researchers could extract that DNA and trace where those animals came from, they could solve the mystery of where these texts originated. But extracting DNA from 2,000-year-old parchment is nearly impossible. The DNA is fragmented, contaminated, barely there. And these are among the most important documents in human history. One careless move destroys them forever. So the team worked with microscopic precision in a super clean Swedish laboratory with airlocks and UV lights. Conservators collected samples from blank areas of the scrolls, sometimes just dust. They used silica-based extraction, a technique that grabs DNA like a molecular magnet. They studied 39 items, 26 scroll fragments, plus ancient sandals, water skins, and garments. Now they were ready to unlock the answer. But the researchers went deeper. They analyzed genetic lineages within the animals themselves, haplogroups. Genetic family lines passed through maternal lines. For sheep, there are five main groups, A, B, C, D, and E. If fragments came from the same lineage, they came from the same flock, made by the same community of scribes. They focused on a specific text, the Songs of the Sabbath Sacrifice, not biblical, but a mystical liturgical composition. Multiple copies were found at Qumran, suggesting it was important, but another copy turned up 50 kilometers south at Masada, a different fortress, different community, different location. How did the same text appear in two completely different places, did Qumran write it first, then members traveled to Masada? Or did different communities independently copy the same popular text? The DNA provided the answer. Every copy of the songs from Qumran came from sheep in haplogroup B, all of them, all produced locally by the same community of scribes. But the Masada copy told a different story. Its DNA came from haplogroup A sheep, completely unrelated to the Qumran flock. What this meant was stark, Masada didn't receive the text from Qumran. They made their own copy, with their own scribes, their own parchment suppliers, the songs of the Sabbath. Sacrifice wasn't the exclusive property of one isolated sect. It was popular, widespread, circulating among different communities across Judea. This is DNA evidence of shared religious culture. The ancient Jewish communities were talking to each other, reading the same texts, copying the same prayers. 
circulating ideas. The DNA investigation revealed one final revelation, misattribution. Many fragments weren't discovered through archaeology. In the mid-20th century, antiquities dealers bought and sold fragments in the open market. Some were assigned to Qumran simply because they were grouped with other fragments being sold. One fragment, 4Q344, stood out as an oddball. While nearly every other Qumran scroll is religious literature, 4Q344 is a legal document, a mundane note acknowledging financial debt. Its style, dating, and content were all different. Scholars long suspected it didn't really come from Qumran. The DNA confirmed it. The sheepskin DNA didn't cluster with authentic Qumran scrolls. It was a genetic outlier. This fragment came from somewhere else, where everyday documents were common. It was mistakenly mixed into the Qumran collection through antiquities dealing. Similarly, a fragment from the Book of Isaiah was a genetic outlier, suggesting it too came from a different location. For the first time, theories about the scroll's origins have been supported by independent scientific research. Genetic data settled decades-old debates. The Dead Sea Scrolls aren't the product of one isolated group. They are the work of various communities across Judea, a vibrant intellectual landscape where ideas flowed, texts circulated, and different traditions coexisted. Each fragment still holds secrets. The story is far from finished, and DNA just proved it's worth telling. If you found this fascinating, like and share this video. Subscribe to History Diary for more stories where science reveals the secrets of the past. Let me know in the comments what ancient mystery you'd like me to investigate next. See you in the next discovery.